হাই এভরি ওয়ান দিস ইজ প্রিয়নজিৎ আমার নাম প্রিয়নজিৎ ঘোষ বাংলায় বলছি বিকজ আই থিঙ্ক আই কম আই কম ফ্রম ওয়েস্ট বেঙ্গল অ্যান্ড মোস্ট অফ ইউ বাট আই হ্যাভ স্পেন্ড আ লট অফ মাই টাইম স্টেইং ইন সাউথ ওয়ার্কিং উইথ ইউ নো আ লট অফ কোম্পানিজ ইন সাউথ সো হোয়াট আই ট্রাই টু ডু ইজ ইউ নো দিস ইজ আ ভেরি ইন্টারেস্টিং টাইম বিকজ দিস ইজ জাস্ট প্রি লাঞ্চ and uh, all we wish is that uh, how fast this talk gets over so that we can go to lunch right uh, but before that what i'll try to do is you know i'll try to just understand the age group because that's a bit important for me so how many of you are between 20 to 25 can you just raise your hand so that's like uh, almost 60 to 70% how many from 25 to 30 so that's like 10% and how many 30 to 40 or 30 to 50 so that's like 20% of the people right and 50 and above i think yeah, <laughs> i can see you right so what the reason i ask you is because i'm a student entrepreneur a uh, bit about my background i did my mba from indian institute of management raipur i passed out in 2019 and unlike a lot of you who believe that once you get into an im you have arrived and you know you have succeeded in life and you have a great career i took the leap of faith in opting out of placements myself so i went to the placement committee of iim and say mere ko job nahi chahiye i want to pursue my career in a startup so this is my life what i'll try to do in the next 15 20 minutes is try to give you aspects from 2018 to 2022 now what i did and try to give you three learnings so even if you can take away one learning especially the people who is you know 20 to 25 uh, and one of you get inspired to start up uh, after this session i'll be like more than happy that i have been successful in my talk but before this let me just give you my background from 2011 to 2017 right so as i mentioned i'm a bangali uh, bengali when i used to work in my first company tcs my manager used to say machi khabi machi khabi and you know that's the perception with a lot of people have for bongs i'm not trying to make a discrimination over here but we are thought to be the intellectuals of society uh, i'm always taught uh, by my parents my parents uh, come from my mother does not have a proper education but my father is into railways the government job with a lot of bengalis does and i have always been taught to take the safe route right uh which you when you come to bangalore or delhi you see a lot of uh, risk takers but uh, we as bongs are always taught play the safe path do a very good life and you know it's all all sorted and uh, i am being that good uh, bhalo manush bhalo chele bhadro chele uh, i was the top 1 percentile in uh, isc in 2011 uh, i was the top 2 percentile uh, during my cat uh, in 2017 and a lot of like i i heard some of you are from it goa so my first company was tcs and you know i was that person when you go to tcs you just think ki mba kaise karna hai theek hai because uh, you just feel ki ek saal ke baad you start preparing for cat and all and i also did that and i was like my only aim till 2017 was that uh, uh, do a good job earn 20 30 lakhs have a good wife and life is settled that was the my perception of life uh, till 2017 and i got into indian institute of management raipur i was very happy uh, then post 2018 my life changed okay that's when my perception my outlook towards uh, what life is changed and that's the story i'll be trying to share so what happened in 2018 you know i was sitting like one of you probably at the last end uh, you know trying to hear somebody and there was this guy from i am ahmedabad and uh, he told about that i was from raipur luckily uh, you know this i am ahmedabad bangalore or bombay and this place is you do a lot of these events but in raipur there is not a lot of startup events though i was from an i am so this guy came and this guy said that i was starting an incubator over here in raipur and i would like all of you to come and be a part of that incubator and do things and like that and somehow you know within me i always wanted to do something like i can 100% bet like out of this 20 to 30 years old 90% logo ko kuch karna hai kabhi na kabhi kuch idea pe kaam kiya hai na kabhi na kabhi soche ho na ki is pe aage kaise kaam karna hai you have spent 3 months you have gone to some hackathon you have done something right 
but you never knew how to take it forward because there was nobody to guide, there was no platform and so many other reasons, right? So I was also one of those persons who was always trying to do something in college, trying to form teams, trying to do innovative stuff, but never had a guidance. I never saw business in my life. I come from a salaried family like till my grandfather. <laughs> okay, so I haven't seen a business around me, nothing, no idea, right, till, till I joined IM Raipur. And so I got really motivated that, you know, what can we do? So in, from 2018 to the next six months, the biggest challenge was to find out what to do. <laughs> you know, sometimes you, you think like uh, it's, it's such a silly question, but the biggest uh, clarity, that you mind, clarity that you need in your mind is to figure out what to do. So what happened was, you know, I was on a trip to Bastar. So I don't know how many of you have heard of uh, the Bastar and the jungles of Chhattisgarh and all, and I went there. And I saw that I was in a primary healthcare center and I saw that, you know, there was no doctor. I saw that there was 100 people, but there was no doctor. And there was only some people who were cleaning the place. They were also the nurse who were treating these people. So I was like literally shocked. So when I went to more PHCs and all, I saw that it was the same situation. Like there was one doctor every district. So it got me thinking, and I have no background in healthcare. Never did I imagine I tried PMT and I failed. So that's my background, okay? So uh, it, it's like that I, I don't, I, it's not that I com come from family of doctors or something like that. So I understood that there was a huge gap. You know, there were uh, relatively a few number of doctors and there was a huge demand and there was a need for screenings to be done at the bottom of the pyramid for people to make somebody aware. What that particularly means is what we are doing today. So let's just discuss what we are doing today. So what we are trying to create is we are trying to create AI modules, artificial intelligence modules, which can be run just through your smartphones. And what you need is you just need to, you know, take somebody's images, let's say of their eye or their mouth, something like that. And just like a doctor would sort of see your eye and diagnose you, so we are using artificial intelligence to do a diagnosis, right? And we are one of the few players in India who is doing it uh, through the phone currently. But this is a journey of 2018 to 2022 now, right? So back to the journey again in 2018. So I was like, you know, really fascinated. He, you know, there was so much uh, noise around healthcare and so many things happening. But at the ground, the reality is, you know, very different. Okay, so, you know, conferences may na sab healthcare or AI or yeh sab ke baare mein baat karte hai. I hope all of you understand Hindi na. So we all talk of this artificial intelligence, new technology, changing paradigm, healthcare 2.0, digital health, all these things in the conferences. But when you go to the ground, there was nothing like that. So I was like, you know, really disappointed. I thought, how can I solve it? Uh, one of the biggest challenges which I saw in, uh, you know, in, in uh, Raipur or Chhattisgarh that time was malaria because malaria it come from a malaria bill. So I thought, can I create something for malaria diagnosis? That was my first idea, that I would take images of the blood sample from a microscope, and we would create an AI module sort of replacing the pathologist, okay? And I'll tell you where we went with it. But the interesting part was 2018 to 2019, I'm a techie, but I'm not a coder. IT mein kaam karte, they will understand that not all techies are coder and not all coders are also you know material who can create products and especially AI products right so what I had the ground reality end of 2018 was I had 30,000 rupees in my bank uh, my father had given uh, 15 lakh rupees to do my MBA uh, I was a decent student and my placements was there and I had to take the placements that that's what all the IM graduates do in this country. They take up a good placement and then they go and sell shampoos or they'll <laughs> they go and sell something else, like a t-shirt or something else. That was uh, IM grads are paid for. So, and I didn't even had a team. So I was like very fascinated ki how to find a good techie and why would he work for me? Chalo, 5%, 10% equity ka value kya hai? Like today, if somebody gives you 10% equity of a new company, what will you do? Right? Bangalore mein toh, like, you know, like, it's a saying ki, uh, matlab, uh, if you want to take a good techie, you need a funding for it <laughs> to, you know, hire that uh, techie. So what I did was, again, I bootstrap thinking and uh, I'm unlike a Bengali, probably a little bit different thinking. Uh, luckily, I had the NIT, IIT uh, Raipus behind, uh, around me in my campus. 
So what I did was I went to those colleges, met the placement committee, and said, who's the most smartest and rebellious guy in your college? Tell me the top three. And you know, I got two, three contacts. I met them. They were all very raw. They wanted to do something. And somehow, with one or two people we connected, I started working with five people, created a technology. I was, you know, the, the thing was, I was very hyped, hyped during that time. 2018, 2019, like I was covered in uh, ET now and all. Because when you are from an IM and you are doing something, the world shows you that you have arrived again, right? So 2019 started. Uh, I, I thought, ki, okay, now I have a team of few techies from IITs, NITs, and I'm the business guy. I'll go and sell. And uh, just like we see in your story and other uh, platforms, uh, and you hear stories of you know, IIT, I am graduate, starting a startup, raising $1 million like that. So my perception for startup was that. Sach bata raho, mera bhi perception was that, and I started it off. And I was like very much courageous. I went to the placement committee and said, I don't placement. Nahi and they were like, are you sure that you wanted to do this? And especially in health when you have no background, I was like, yeah, yeah. I'll be leaving college and you know, these VCs and angels will come and fund me, man. I'm, I'm this guy and there is an IIT and with me and I was like pretty confident. So, <laughs> so what happened was college ended <laughs> fine. Uh, we got our first client also, which was Thyrocare. Uh, in Mumbai, so Thyrocare is a diagnostic slabs chain, and I was like really, really happy. Wow, first company Thyrocare agaya. Ab to matlab we are the next big thing in India. Okay, media coverage was also there, right? Uh, <laughs> but then what happened was uh, I went to them. I asked for you know Dr. Valuman is the CEO of Thyrocare, and I asked him uh, five minutes of his time. So I traveled from Raipur to Mumbai to get his five minutes. So he gave me five minutes. He said, yeah, yeah, you want to do and everything and all, but we can't pay you. <laughs> Reality struck me, and I'm pretty sure like a lot of entrepreneurs would understand as a first time founder, you are squeezed. You are you know like literally uh, squeezed by all the external forces. They said, okay. So then again, mera bootstrap wala dimaag chala. I said ki Mumbai to matlab Mumbai mein, you know, unlike Bangalore, I think like even if you take a two three thousand rupees hotel in Mumbai, you can't uh, matlab wo jaga itna sahi hoga. Okay, you can't like three people can't stay. So what I negotiated with Thyrocare was that we will work for you. We'll create this technology for you in health and AI, but you need to give me a space to sit uh, and give us food. So you need to give us a, your canteen food for three people. And you need to give us space. This is a I am graduate passing out from 2019. Six months, next six months, we stayed uh, in their uh, in their office in Mumbai in uh, MIDC. We had very good relationships. We tried our best. Neither the product became successful, uh, neither the engagement got successful. But what it did was, it <laughs> gave me the reality of life. It made me understood in 2019 that how difficult it is uh, for somebody to uh, start up. But what I also realized, and that's my first learning, that there is no right time to start up. So I can guarantee and bet this, that out of all the entrepreneurs who are here, including Bala, Red Bra uh, this summit, we cannot plan when to start up. You never ever know which is the uh, best time for you to start, it just happens. It's not a, you know, like a spark moment that, hey, this is the start. Nothing like that. Don't go by the media stories. Uh, real life is very, very different. So now comes 2020. Luckily, what happened was we got selected uh, for some grants. And we got uh, some 50, 70 lakhs worth grants. So healthcare, one good thing is a lot of grants are there. So even if you don't get funding, you can get some grants. But again, the reality I got key in India, if you get a grant, let's say even of one crore, you don't get the money in the next six months. I don't know how many of you are uh, aware of this or not. So in uh, January of 2020, we got the money <laughs> of 50 lakhs. And uh, we were like, wow, next exile to zinda rehenge. But that money didn't come for the next one year. And I, I don't know how. So probably, you know, this is a very good way to sort of uh, kill a startup with a, in, a, in, a, in a different way, right? And then COVID stuck. And then especially COVID stuck, and that was the time 
when the people I was working with passed out from college. So they were also like, Mere yaar, uh, campus placements nahi lena hai, IIT, IIT bhaad mein jai. So they also left placements because of, you know, uh, my dream, my vision that we want to create this healthcare AI platform uh, for early health screening and help the world. So they also gave me a touch and they gave me a touch. And they gave me a touch. So 2020, me with a failed client, no business, completely zero revenue, we started. And then there was two more people from IITs and NITs, they had also left placements. And we were all sitting, COVID just happened. <laughs> Worst part was we cannot even move out. <laughs> and we were just scratching our head that, you know, uh, what to do. Uh, again, it, it was a very, very difficult situation. And uh, we had no fancy offices. We were, uh, what we did was the bootstrap thinking, we took a, took a flat. Uh, we were four people staying in the flat. One room was the office, the other room was for sleeping and doing stuff. And then to survive, what we started was we started doing service-based work. We started doing consulting. We started doing other things in healthcare to learn the, uh, learn the stuffs and started making the business uh, survive. And that is how one year went. So now we are in 2021. Chronology follow right? 2021. So my second learning for all of you guys is like, the you will succeed in a startup only and only when it is alive, right? So if you look at the startup scenario, uh, within zero to two years, 98% of the companies shut, right? Within the first two years, 98% of companies in India or startups get closed or is failed, run out of money, you don't know whatever, uh, founders, start to quarrel, like imagine my uh, co-founders who just finished their studies, did their B.Tech, and they were like, you have been stuck, you have been stuck, what will we do, and all. So you can only win, you can only succeed, only and only when you are alive. I can also tell you a very nice data, like if you look at the startup journey, zero to 10 years, zero to three years, or zero to three years, you will see several competition, when we were in 2020, we were like, Are so many people are doing this, people were comparing and all. When you go to three to seven years, you will see few competition. And when you go to seven to 10 years, if you can survive that period, seven to 10 years, you will see probably one or two competition. E-commerce comes to mind, what is Flipkart, Amazon, right? So, you know, there is, the, there is this concept where you can only have two or three big names, and that is where you need to ensure that you stay alive. That is what we did in the COVID period and all we sort of survived and we made a pivot. We made a pivot, we understood that the world is going mobile. There is a lot of hospitals and clinics who wants to do treatments, who are looking for valuable customers who need treatments, but there was no way to engage the end user and tell them that they have a problem, right? So just to give you an understanding, let's say in India, there are 10 crore diabetic patients. Who know they, are, they have diabetes, but there are 50 crore pre-diabetic patients who don't know that they can develop diabetes in the next couple of years, right? This 50 crore pre-diabetic patients are people who will need treatment in the next couple of years. And the hospitals and the clinics want to interact with them, want to stay in touch with them. So today what we are building at Logi.ai is primarily a B2B healthcare platform for population health screening using artificial intelligence. So if we look at any healthcare journey, it primarily has three parts, awareness, treatment, follow-up. These are the three broad parts. And we are trying to create a platform uh, to sort of enable the hospitals and clinics to stay in touch and do this easily. Currently, we are working on oral health. We are working on eye. Now, 2021, okay? somewhere around July, August. I got 50 lakh rupees grant, which we didn't get in the bank. Now, we finally got that 50 lakhs. Okay? So finally, in uh, July, August 2021, we got that 50 lakhs. We, we hired some people. And things changed. Things drastically changed in the next six months. Today, we are present in more than 300 plus clinics and hospitals. We are officially the AI partner for Apollo Clinics and Apollo Hospitals. This year alone, in the first three months, we have signed contracts of more than 1.3 CR. 
and we are looking to clock revenue this year of around 1 CR. This will be like our first revenue generating uh, uh, year. And more than that, last month we did more than 10,000 plus screenings and engagement through our platform. And uh, so, so this is what excites me. When I wake up in the morning every day, I sort of try to see ki, what's the usage of my platform, how many partners are using. I, I personally feel that, and I think a lot of the entrepreneurs would also understand and sort of agree with this, that revenue and all is a byproduct. We are still bootstrapped, by the way. So we haven't raised any money. We are raising a pre-seed round currently. Uh, but we are more looking into you know, creating a valuable company in the next 10 years. So what excites me is that how would healthcare change in 2030, right? How would systems change? Would we, would we be still be waiting for two, three days to connect with the right healthcare provider for our treatment, or would it be like in two minutes or one minute, right? That's what excites me. And during this process, in the last six months, what I also understood is, like when you are a first time founder, you are you know, in the two extremes. Either you are very much confused on what to do, or you are very arrogant and you, know, you feel that whatever you do, that's the right step and the rest of the people don't know anything. So it's a balance which you sort of uh, you know, you know, need to make. So what I, what I also understood is, once you become a founder, there are a lot of expectations, you know? And especially when the company starts to hit the track, right? <laughs> He's turning his head. So, you know, there is this zero to one journey, there is this one to 10 journey, and I would say this 10 to 100 kind of journey. So zero is one, I think we are at 0 0.5 at this moment, so we won't die off, but we still haven't sort of had a right product market fit, we are there. And then what happens is there are people who become serious, now livelihoods depend upon you, right? So there are a lot of expectations. You need to constantly raise funding. You need to create a huge vision. I am being called a lot of the times that, hey, you are not clear what you want to do by my teammates, right? So what I understood in this process was that, you know, as Indians, and again, as a Bengali, I was, as a Bong, I was never taught to think big. I was never taught that, you know, uh, Think beyond the one lakh salary per month. I'll tell you very frankly, think beyond this thing, right? And the world is so big if you become courageous and if you are willing to make mistakes. So life or startup is actually not a race, it is a marathon. I can be very well or we can be very well doing a, a talk over here and I have an audience and just as I go out, it may be difficult for me to get an auto in Bangalore. Right? He wouldn't even uh, you know, listen to me. So, so the thing is, you have to live every day. Do you know a woodpecker? Woodpecker who sorts of you know, uh, pecks on the, on the tree every day. So I think entrepreneurship is like that. You have to keep on hitting and hope that every month or every week you become one person better. It, it is not a journey about you know, making money. It is not a journey about you know, uh, uh, becoming rich or something like that. But it is a self, it is a journey where you sort of self-realize what you want to do big in life, right? So today, when I wake up in the morning, I feel that what can I do to create better healthcare services for one crore people? And that is what excites me to go to uh, 2030. So on that note, I would just like to reiterate the three points which I mentioned, and I end my uh, journey over here, that if you are a student, and especially like you know, in your 20s and 30s, take the risk. There is no right time to start up. I was, I was you know, uh, mentored or I was told by a lot of my seniors that work for five years, 10 years, get some experience, and then take a startup. You know, on the contrary, I used to think that once I pass out from IIM and I get married and I have children, I don't know how will I take the risk again. For one and a half years, I didn't even take a salary after passing out from IIM. It's only in the last eight months or so I'm taking a decent salary, not even very high, right? So there is no right time to start up. If you have a problem and if you have a team of energetic people, start tomorrow. Don't register a company, start tomorrow. Do the legal registrations and all uh, you can you know, figure out. Once you have started, I see this with a lot of people. You start with something, after three months you fail, and then you say, okay, this is not good for me. 
you try for six months and then you fail. You know, there was this one talk where the person said that they tried multiple times and then they succeeded. You have to give at least two, three years of your life. The only way you can make the startup succeed if it's alive. And there will be at least 100 reasons for your startup to fail and only one reason for your startup to succeed. If you cannot see that one reason and if you are not, you know, over enthusiastic, over passionate about what you're building, why the world would be anyways, right? So you, you, you need to sort of keep your startup alive and last, be courageous, think huge, think big, don't think that, you know, uh, what if I do this, you know, they will be angry. What if I do this, somebody else will get pissed off, right? Don't think about this. Accept your mistakes with the most humility like you, you can have, actually, right? So I do this a lot of times, even when, you know, my core team members tell me that you were wrong. I would just go later and tell that, yeah, I think I was wrong in this and I need to improve. We are all learning. And again, like I would say that uh, it's, you know, a journey. One of the myths that I have broken is, yes, a Bengali can also do a business. And I'm not a person who is just having machi. OK, so on that note, thanks a lot. Thanks, Bala, for giving me this opportunity. You know, it was really a pleasure to share my journey. And I look forward to, and if even at least one of you have been inspired by this journey, please take the leap of faith, because I have taken it, and I have no regrets. Thank you. Thank you.